and welcome to another episode of We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. I shall be your host for this evening. It's the same as any other evening that we do these. Tonight is a little bit of a special show. It's going to be called uh, Two or Two Can. There is no try. Now I know why it's called that. And you will know why it's called that. Because joining me tonight is Michael May from Two Can Play That Game. So good evening, Michael. Evening, Richard. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's delightful. I'm um, I'm a fan of your of your channel, your YouTube channel, of your videos. I've been watching for some time, and it's one of these things. I think we've had a conversation back and forward on Facebook, where it's kind of like we'll do it this month, we'll have a chat next month, and then finally you're here. So it's brilliant. Yeah, it's it's, it's good to be on. It's good to be talking to you because, as you say, I mean we've talked a lot. On like social media and stuff, but obviously this is the first time talking actual yeah. speech. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of these weird things where I know what your voice sounds like, and you know what my voice sounds like. Yeah, but it's, actually, it's... kind of that interacting of voices kind of never, um, kind of has never happened before. So it's so it's kind of cool. Now, for everybody out there, if this is the first time that you've listened to, we're not wizards. The reason that we do this is because there's quite simply not enough podcasts out there about board games. I've had a good look, I've checked, and can't find any others. And the other reason is that we wanted to speak to Michael May and find out a little bit more about the guy that was behind these lovely videos that he puts out. Um, If we start off, you recently successfully completed your, your your Kickstarter campaign. Um, for kind of, kind of the continuing to kind of keep the show kind of going and with resources yeah, and stuff at it like being that. Yeah, kind of season two, so the second year of the show, even though it's a bit over the first yeah. year. Um, so it was just get some money coming in really to help cover the costs because I I did the probably insane thing that I don't recommend anyone else do and I don't think anyone else has done really which is I just quit my job and started my channel full time from nothing (laughs) with no money coming in Um, so that's not necessarily the best of ideas you know because everyone has bills to pay etc so part of trying to help towards my wife paying all the bills yeah. was doing the Kickstarter just to cover some of the costs of the channel so it wasn't quite as unfair and hard on her as it <laughs> has been for the first year at least. That would lead to an interesting conversation. So what are you giving? I'm bringing you cardboard, darling. Yeah. <laughs> and we can always burn it if the gas and the electricity kind of get shut off. I don't know why. Why are you looking at me like that, honey? <laughs> honey, I love you. But, uh, <laughs> but but on the bright side, I don't have to have those discussions that other people do. Of yeah. What's a new, another new game done arriving? Yeah. I, f- I thought you weren't going to be buying any new games. Because <laughs> yes. I mean, I can, I can justify it all. <laughs> you could just say it's for the good of the channel. Exactly. It's for the greater it's fantastic. good. <laughs> it's fantastic. I mean, um, what we like to do is we. I mean, it's always interesting to hear somebody's history with a good old tabletop and the good old cardboard. And um, my, you know, I always say we like to have a little bit of a kind of a look back into the past before focusing on the present and jumping ahead into the future. So, um, I mean, have you been playing long in terms Um, of tabletop and cardboard? It's been very much um, different forms, but all my life. You know, as Mm. with everyone, I started as a child playing Monopoly, you know, Risk, those sort of games, the mass market games. Yeah. Um, And then in my teenage years, I got into Warhammer and all of, you know, the Games Workshop stuff. I mean, my favourite was like Blood Bowl, Gorkamorka. You know, I, I pretty much I played them all through most of my teens and then also moved into the more role play side of tabletop gaming so D&D things like that um when i went to uni i then started doing live role play stuff so like larp stuff oh, all right okay um you know the proper like with weapons hitting each other and all sorts so it it's been proper full spectrum and then after kind of 
moved away from university um just kind of got caught up with work couldn't really get people together to do rpgs and then a few years later started getting back into board games i mean i'd been playing things like munchkin and stuff since uni and from yeah yeah um and then it was just really probably five six years ago um started getting much more into just as a hobby playing board games um picking up up cheap from the works that sort of thing yeah and the works it, is such was... a spectacular place to find kind of like obscure kind of board games yeah it's, it's kind of weird they get these bulk lots i think of games that have basically just been sat in warehouses like, and sold for ages that are, like taj they're, mahal they're, they're okay <laughs> games they're yeah. not like the amazing games but they're, they're definitely good games, and they're just so cheap. They sell them for like five, ten pounds for know, this thirty, just... forty pound game. Yeah. Uh, so it's it works out really well. I mean, that's how I first started getting a lot of my collection together. I mean, a lot of them I've moved on from now, and I've shifted. Yeah. But uh, one thing that really helped me getting into games was at the same sort of time that I was getting into all of these ones from the works and playing those all the time. Also, nearby Thirsty Meeples, the board game cafe open. Oh my goodness, yes. So, I mean, that's literally just down the road from me. So, um, I started going there every week. I, every every Sunday I'd go there. And did, that, I, can I, it, did that kind of help you? I games I was going to play that I'd researched online watching other people's Yeah, YouTube that's what I was going to say. Does that, do you kind of end up in the situation where you're not, if you've got access to something like that, you don't end up kind of having to buy as much yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't really buying much at all at that point. Um, it was just the, the odd view that it was like, I tried and I was like, wow, I really like this game, I want to get this game. Mm. And it was it was the Ticket to Ride, Small Worlds, you know, those those gateway games that people who have been in the hobby for a while all know and are all like, yeah, it's an okay game. But when you were first getting into the hobby, it was like this amazing thing, the best game ever. I because think, they are just so good for introducing you to the more in-depth games out there. Well, it's just letting you know that there's different mechanics out there. Like, you know, your small world. Do I roll a dice? No, you don't have to. You just put your stuff down. Yeah, or... I mean, Small World is one of those fantastic games that I really hate Risk. And one of the things I hate about it is it just goes on forever. Yeah. And the other thing is how random it is with the dice rolls. Yes. And then you've got Small World, which is, in essence, the same game. But it takes away both those elements. You've got this finite time. You know how long the game's going to go. And you can tell when you're going to win or lose a battle. That just works fantastically well. So when... You're talking Thirsty Meeples, but when do you get to the point where you start kind of saying, hmm, I'm actually starting to buy more than just going along and kind of playing. I mean, was was there games that kind of set your world on fire that you said, right, listen, I don't only, I don't only have to be able to have access to this game, I need to be able to buy it. What was your kind of your... I, I mean, there were, there were a few, as I say. I mean, Small World was one of yeah. the ones I bought and stuff. Because the way I always approached Thirsty Meeples was that that was a try before you buy. Ah, so right, it was okay. very much, I, I would go and, you know, three-hour session, try and play as many games as possible which was usually two to three games mm. because of the kind of style of games and length of games that i was playing then and the basically the best of the bunch i would buy so that i could then play at home and play with friends elsewhere without having to pay money to play yeah did you i mean when you moved on did you get into the heavier stuff i mean was there stuff that you picked up i mean there's probably some heavier stuff i mean I'm not a huge heavy gamer. Yeah. Um, I think probably the limit of heaviness for me is sort of like the Terra Mystica yeah. side of things. It's not going, you know, food chain magnate, that sort of thing. <laughs> you know, it, it's... Very, I, a feast the, the for main, Odin kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 they're the sort of games that I would probably play once or twice if other people had them. But yeah. I tend not to buy them because I'm just not going to get enough play out of them. For me, playing with the majority of my groups and just the time you actually have to play games, generally I want games to be under two hours long. Yeah. And there, there are a few exceptions, which are like my weekend games type thing, like I've got Mage <laughs> Night that, you know, it's four hours for a short session and stuff. Do you, but, is that the, that's the same, is that the one you can play by yourself? Yeah, that's my, that's actually my favourite solo play game is Mage Night, um, because it's, 
you can just so easily play it yourself as if you were playing with other people almost. Yeah. Um, you have like another person acting as a timer on you, but otherwise, you know, you've got your deck of cards. It's it's got a deck building aspect, and I do like deck building. So is it is it kind of like the gone you're gone fishing kind of game? We just like say I'm off to you know we traditionally somebody say right I'm off fishing and they'd go away and disappear for like four and a half five hours. It's just kind of yeah, mentioning you staying kind of... in the house and everyone's <laughs> playing. Yes, <Yeah. laughs> don't have to worry about the waders or the wellies it's, it's or the like big jacket. It's like if you were going fishing in the middle of the house and everyone was then like, "Right, can I just get past you?" <laughs> Do you have to put your rod to one side when people are trying to get <laughs> trying to get past? It make an interesting way to move, kind of like the figure about the board. Though I'm just going to hook this one down and just move them. Nee, got this one. That's fine. Uh, um, just making the, the, there is a game that's like that, isn't there? Though? You're hooking pieces. You've got like a uh, brain built onto your head. I'm trying. Uh, to think, I can't think what it's called now. But it's it's like just a random weird party game. It'll come back to you probably oh, in probably. about half an hour's time, and you're just yeah, going out. Probably and go. just just once we finish the interview, it'll just be like <laughs> construction just mayhem. Out, out loud. Yeah. Or you or you wake up at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> just screaming it, <laughs> and your your wife will be like. Ah. Michael, you just woke up in a sweat, just <laughs> shouting, <laughs> shouting out "crane panic" or something. I don't know what was going on. You were, oh, you oh, were delirious. It. It's got it. Lift it. There you go. Yeah, I think it's called just lift it. Really simple <laughs> name. Um, not my kind of game at all. Really, too no. far too light and just nonsense. Yeah, yeah. But it's, isn't it's, I mean, it's, it, 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 some people love that kind of game, and I well, think that's great that the the hobby is so varied. That you do have things like these heavy euros, and then these super silly little like kids games that anyone can play. Some of these, I mean, it's it's the fun thing, isn't it? I mean, there is the temptation to go all serious out with your board game and stuff, but sometimes it is just about having a kind of a bit of a a bit of a gentle laugh. Yeah, so I mean, I, there are different kinds of fun, and different kinds of fun appeal to different people. I think. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I mean, you can be playing a serious game. But still have that like banter and laugh aspect around the table, and you can at the same time you can be playing what's meant to be a silly game. But if you're not being silly and having mm. that banter and stuff around the table, yeah. it's gonna fall down a bit, really. There's kind of like those games where you feel there's like you're meant to have kind of like you're meant to have fun, and if you don't have fun, you're sometimes ruining the game. I think uh, your Cards Against Humanity. Is one of these games that's meant to be also very yeah, hilarious, you, and I've seen. To, <clears throat> you've got to just embrace it, really. Yeah. You? If you don't embrace it, it's kind of pointless. You're playing, playing. I mean, that's another one of these games. I, I, I'm not very keen on that. Uh, <laughs> partly because the first time I played it was in Thirsty Meeples on a Sunday morning. Oh no. Okay. So that would. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have gone yeah, down well at all. Yeah, families all around. No, not the kind of game for that no, situation. Not at all. Don't get me not wrong, you know, in my younger days when I was like at uni and stuff, that would have been the perfect game for like a night out drunk type situation. <laughs> but this, is, this, a, thing, this is hungover it's, it's a game Sunday. for the right time, for the right place, for the right people, I think. <laughs> and I think there is a game that will fit all three of those. It's just a matter of finding the right one. So what made you move... <clears throat> Excuse me. What made you move? Which I make my voice sound be deeper. What made you move from? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, now it just sounds a bit like you're hitting on me. It's a bit. I weird. know it. There's a bit. <laughs> unco- it's like, well, hey, Mister <laughs> Me, what's a what's a good looking voice like you hanging around <laughs> in a place like this? Um, but seriously, I mean, when you got the collection, I mean, I take it you have got a reasonable, what you would call a reasonable sized curated collection i mean i i actually don't because i try and keep it quite slimline um oh. i think i've only got about 30 or 40 games that's 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 a figure that's potentially maybe about 50 percent of what i thought you were going to say yeah i as i say i i, I try and keep it small because we, we've only got a small two-bed house all so oh, right there's okay. not a lot of there's not a lot of space really to store the games yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, I get sent a lot of games to review, yeah. but I don't keep the majority of those. Um, although I had been keeping them, and they were literally just clogging up all over the house. Yeah. And it was around January time. I had a big clear out, gave a lot of games to charity and stuff, just oh, to cool. um, kind of 
kind of <laughs> meeting just that we could move around just, the house. Exactly. A bit. Just Although sure. uh, then um, Arcadia Quest Inferno turned up, and now the house uh, is all yeah. clogged up. But that's just one game. It's just this when giant are you stack. when are you when are you going to be moving into the um, Arcadia Quest box? Because I've heard that's actually <laughs> that's the, that's the size. It's actually helping to solve uh, some of the housing crisis in the UK yeah. by people are just kind of moving in, in there. That and uh, I think the first um, first kind of copies of Gloomhaven that are going around, but they are priced at London prices like four hundred thousand pound for like a <laughs> one bedroom, a one bedroom flat. You can't. Uh, you can't swing a uh, can't swing an orc about in. Yeah, I mean, um, it's the same with all these uh, these um, uh, call mini or not ones at the moment, isn't it? Oh, Although we're just... not meant to call them that anymore, are we? What it's, are we just Simon just... Simon? That sounds worse. It <laughs> really does. I don't like calling them Simon, but apparently no. that is their official name now. Simon. Um, that's what we're meant to call them. Yeah. It um, reminds me of, of the lead character. Are just huge. Yeah, they're just huge. No, that reminds me of the lead the lead character at a little shop of horrors, basically. Suddenly, Simon. But anyway, that's beside <laughs> the point. Um, and if you get that, you're by like Seymour, is Doth it? My, it's pretty much, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, so you've got your collection, and what makes you decide to think? Well, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and start talking about games and speaking to people about them and telling them what I think because am I right in saying the kind of the two can play the game it wasn't a trick name I mean the main idea was the crux of it was I'm going to talk about this game but can you play it just two players I mean how, yeah, do, how I mean, did that, that kind of that all come about kind of, what, what happened basically is I had a mental and physical breakdown pretty much um, I, I was in a stressful job and it was just causing me health problems, both mental and physical. And so I just said, I can't take this anymore. I have to quit. And mm. it wasn't even, you know, I can look for work while I'm doing this. I, it's just, I need to get clear and then look for work. Um, so what happened is it was right before Christmas in 2015. And basically I quit, um, in the December and then it was like right what am I going to do now well while I'm looking for work you know I, I watch a huge amount of these YouTube channels you know I listen to podcasts and everything mm. unfortunately since starting my channel I actually listen to less podcasts and watch less videos because I just can't <laughs> find the time <laughs> it, it's ironic um, whereas somehow I managed to find the time around a job I, I guess it was you know you'd do it at lunchtime etc yeah. whereas working from home I tend to any spare time rather than going and doing stuff that's like watching other people's it's making my own Yeah. but I, I used to do so much of watching and listening that and I just thought you know I, I want to try and do it myself you know that there's lots of people who do a great job but they don't produce much there's lots of people who maybe produce lots but don't necessarily do such a good job with what they're producing and I felt that they could have they could put more effort into what they're doing and do a better job with it and I thought you know what I, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and try and do it Did and you so... I mean did you find when you were kind of going through that difficult time that board games became a nice little kind of get away from stuff a little bit of an oh, escape bo Board games were pretty much the only thing that was keeping me going at that point to be honest yeah okay i mean one one of the first or well, i say one of the first it was quite early on when i did the channel probably within the first month or so i actually did a video about how i think board games are a huge um benefit for dealing with mental health issues and improving uh. them and kind of people with mental health issues helping them cope with life and engage in social structure and social contact yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it, it was a difficult video for me to do, and I, I, I nearly ended up crying doing it. But yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things. You know, all these mental health campaigns are always saying we we need to talk about these things more, and it's very much true because if we don't talk about them, it becomes hard. It becomes there's this stigma about talking about it. You mm. know, and the more open people are to like saying, you know, what I'm just I'm I'm not great today. I'm having a bad day today. Yeah. Then, the more open people are about saying that, the easier it is then for people to say it. The easier it is for people to understand how each other feel, rather uh -huh. than maybe a 
like doll's face that gets put on, you know. No, no, I know, I know, no, I know exactly where you where you're coming from. This is probably going way too serious for what you're used to. I no, <laughs> listen, no. As we said at the beginning, Michael, it's it's your night. Basically, I'm quite happy to. <laughs> as I say, this is what this is why you know the show notes are, <clears throat> and 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 to let you and to let everybody listening behind the curtain, the show notes consist of. Let's talk about how you got into the hobby. Tech. <laughs> let's talk about games you've maybe been playing recently. Well, we're kind of there. Yeah, and let's when, when and, and a chance to talk about anything else you want to talk about. It's not like <laughs> I I don't know if there's one thing I don't like um, in kind of chats like this. It's kind of like structure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I think, was, no, you know? I, I I completely agree because I mean some podcasts they're so forced, if you will. You you don't have the fluid way a conversation would actually go. It's very much you can tell. All oh, right, they've run out of time for that segment, and they've just no. moved it on. No, I mean, I mean, forced no. it on. You've got to let conversations go where they're going to go. I mean, I know. I mean, it's like there's people that I know that play board games that, in any other situation, would feel such a pressure of being socially awkward that their ability to be in a being an environment where there are set rules and there's not really a deviation from that rule and they can embrace those rules and get structure and enjoy themselves and be able to plan and things like that there are you know i see you see the benefit on a kind of like a daily weekly monthly basis of people that you know other you know they 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 love the board games for what it brings to them and then they're surrounded by likewise you know right yeah. kind of thing yeah. you know like I, I thinking know, people I know exactly you know what you mean. I mean, I, i'm the same way i it, you might not realize this because when i do the videos it's potentially not really me you're seeing a lot of the time mm. it's it's an image i portray doing the videos yeah. but i'm an incredibly shy person i'm not yeah. outgoing in any way shape or form if you no. put me in a room filled with strangers i would just go and stand on the edge in the corner not talking to anyone yeah i'm Whereas actually um, it's, um, yeah. if it's a game day you know right. yeah you, you end up sat at a table talking to people about the game you're playing and you develop a rapport with those people yeah because it's a common ground and if there's one thing yeah. that's difficult about breaking down those kind of I guess just the first barriers to communication. And I know so many people that find it difficult to do that first barrier of communication. I'm lucky because I'm in a position that I'm I'm a salesperson for a living. So if I don't have a way at starting off a conversation, then <laughs> you, you know you what I mean? Have much of a okay, job. you know, yeah, exactly. The boss is like, yeah, I'm gonna have a word. Can you not just say say hello to people down the phone? Oh, I can't, I can't. But you know, things like I think board games. I think people are seeing the benefits of socially board games causing this level of social interaction that this is why you know the whole cafe board game thing kind of works so well that you get people sitting around and 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 just having a cup of coffee yeah, and chatting I mean, it, it's and... why the bo- to my mind at least it's the big reason why board games are having such a resurgence is the fact that they enable and encourage interaction yes. in a way that electronic devices and electronic games the the in, you get interaction but it's not no nah, yeah exactly real I mean, interaction yeah. it's virtual interaction yeah i mean we've said this so many times on the show that you know if i'm playing a board game you know unless it is like a solitaire type thing i am sitting across a table from you know some you know from uh, from someone else and there's always going to be a kind of a level of kind of interaction and it's usually watching Colin go through analysis paralysis to like the 25th degree but then on a Friday but then you know you get to mock him about it so it's well I you know I wouldn't do that because he just he would just kind of like um he then beats me <laughs> by about 150 points and then walks away <laughs> walks away kind of laughing but at the same time you'll walk into the club on Friday and then someday you'll be having a drink you know just a can of coke there'll be somebody there with you know having something to eat and then somebody will be setting up D&D and then somebody will be setting up like a you know somebody will be pl- they'll be just be f- riffling through their magic cards and just sorting out decks and stuff like that and then they'll be chatting and then somebody will say well you know it's sometimes a joke well I suppose we better play a game because people are kind of kind of socially kind of socially kind of interacting yeah going back to yourself <clears throat> Or continuing with yourself, anyway. You so you, you start the channel. What was the first 
do you remember what the first game was that you kind of went ahead and did a little review on then? Uh, first game, I think, was Snow Tales. All right, okay. I think it was Snow Tales, yeah. It was the first game that I covered on the channel. It's either that or Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride Europe, anyway. And do you look back at those videos with fond memories, or do you look back at those videos? Oh, no, kind of I look around? back and I cringe at how <laughs> bad they are. I, I think everybody does that. I think everybody yeah, does that. It's one of these things that when I first started, I jumped straight in. You know, I thought I could do it. I thought, you know, I've got the material, I can do it. And I was pushing, you know, look, look, I'm a new guy. Look at how great my stuff is. And then, you know, even just like a month or two later, I'm like, why was I doing that? That is terrible. I should not have been forcing that to be seen by people. <laughs> Did you start off your, um, do you start off your videos like they all do on YouTube, which is, hey, everyone. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I still do that today. That yeah. has to be. That has but to. I not, think that's. It's. The, the key thing is it's much more natural. Yeah. And one of the things is, though, you, you look at the advice online for how to do this and you are told that is what you should do. People want you to say hi. They want you yeah. to be friendly as if you're in the room with them. Um, but at the same time, it puts people off. It's kind of this weird thing. It's one of these things I've learned doing this channel is that you cannot please anyone really <laughs> no. because no one knows what they want for starters. Yeah. And if you do do something that someone wants, someone else will not want it. So you kind of <laughs> just got to do what you want and just hope for the best. It's like when you read through, like, say, Cor I was, was I watching, I was watching a playthrough video of um something i think it was R rado was doing it oh. and there was like a whole pile of comments going excellent this is amazing this is your finest work and then there was somebody going minute 37 um you've put the red dungeon here when it should have been the blue one and i think do you know what it was it was dungeon lords because <laughs> we were thinking about <laughs> me and colin are thinking about playing it for um for the um, for the show and we did like mm. a survey and people went oh play Dun it was a choice between dungeon lords um Mechs versus Minions and um, what was the other one? Um, Epic Resort. <clears throat> I want to play them okay. all, but you know, <laughs> and they were just like these comments, just saying, "Yeah, there was just rules people to say." And he started going back and says, "Yes, I know, I make mistakes. I'm really, really sorry. What do you yeah. want me to do? Go ha back having and done playthroughs. It's really hard not to make mistakes. I mean, I imagine." Everyone playing games probably makes these mistakes and you just don't notice because there isn't a camera running at the time. I know. And I think it is made worse by having a camera running because as well as thinking about what you're doing in the game, you're also thinking about, right, am I in shop? In shot here? Is this okay? And stuff like that. That, you know, other people don't have to worry about that just causes you to make mistakes. I just, I think it's just part of, I mean, I... That's why we don't have structure and we're not wizards because the ability, having to go back and edit stuff can, to make it sound natural isn't the easiest thing to do because you get changes in tone, inflection and stuff like that yeah. and sometimes I'm just like, I'll just, I'll just let it run and I'll, and I'll kind of beg for, for kind of forgiveness. So you're recording the videos and the channel's, <clears throat> the channel's growing what's okay what's the kind of the is there games that you is there games that you've played that you've then gone on to just be like games that you absolutely adore oh i mean there's there's definitely plenty of those um i mean like my favorite game of all time is arcadia quest so <laughs> I, as i said i i, I got the, Inferno the Kickstarter. Box. unfortunately i missed the original arcadia quest kickstarter oh, right, okay. um okay. so that's a bit of a shame but I, i've actually I, i've had the inferno one sat there for oh, it must be nearly a month now and i've not been able to play it yet i've just not been able to get people together to play it um, but I, thursday night Fingers crossed. No is one comes it? down ill. Is Nothing it? happens. Oh, I'm going to awesome. get finally get a game in, um, and we're going to be playing the first scenario of Pets. So I'm looking forward to that. I think the Pets is a really nice addition to the game that just enhances it. Whereas the base Inferno doesn't really add much on 
the original Arcadia Quest. Yeah. I mean, it's got the Brimstone cards, but they're basically the same as the cards that were introduced in Beyond the Grave. The one thing that it has is the Angels, so that'll be interesting. But Pets just feels like it adds more to the gameplay, adds more change, and the fact that you can then use those pets back through all the other campaigns just means that you can go and replay them all and have them all feel fresh and new because you've got new things going on, not to mention a ton of new heroes with new powers. So, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to that. As I say, it's my favourite game ever. I'm, it's it's actually a terrible game mechanically. I'm well aware of that. <laughs> okay. But what? I do, love oh, it. no, share, share with us because if one of the things we like to do on the show is if, if people are talking about something that they've got to the table... Is I mean, what is what's Arcadia Quest about? What's, I mean, Arcadia Quest is a player v player dungeon crawl. Each player has their own guild of free heroes, mm-hmm. and you'll be you can either play one shots or what I like to do is play through campaigns, which are made up of like six adventures. And throughout those campaigns, you're getting new equipment and you're building up your guild to be bigger and better type thing. And each game focuses on trying to complete quests. Now, some of these quests are kill the other teams. Nice, simple thing, you know, kill one of their people. <laughs> Killing's good. It's, yeah, I mean, it's kind of got that um, almost uh, kind of uh, arena combat aspect to it in that you just respawn. Like, yeah. you can take a turn to rest and you respawn your guys. So it it's not... Like, uh, oh my god, you killed me, I'm set out, I'm eliminated. It's just, oh, that's a bit of a setback, now I've killed you, you've got a bit of a setback. It it just balances really nicely. But mechanically, it is just so random. I mean, there are little bits you can do strategically, but because of the way combat works, it has what they call exploding dice. So if you roll a critical hit, you roll another dice. So you can run into a combat with one dice and be like facing this huge dragon of a monster that yeah. you could, you, you'd imagine you could never possibly defeat, but you yeah. roll crit after crit after crit after crit, and you just smash through them. And You've done that, haven't that, you? Uh, you? Not to a dragon yet. I haven't played with any of the dragons, but I have oh. done that to like this big bad guy. Worse <laughs> is I've done it that I've gone up against like a little goblin and been like, oh, I have all the health in the world, you can't touch me. And they've killed me. Smashed. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> so th- this thing, it, it goes both ways. And you've got basically environment quests that you're completing. Some some missions, it's like uh, capture the flag almost. Some, it's go kill something. So there's lots of different variation in those missions that you're doing. Yeah. But the way it works is there are monsters on the map, but they're kind of like... I don't know if you ever played any of the like old school hack and slash games where you just slashing through and every well, like, time you kill someone, money pops out. Almost like Hero Quest. Are you talking Super Dungeon Explore? I mean, yeah, kind of a bit like that. <clears throat> you know, basically yep. the the monsters are just money bags to yeah. you. You know, that they're, they're a slight hindrance, but they're not the big problem. It's the other players and what they're doing that's the big problem. The, the monsters are just there to give you money to help you build up your guild between games, really, and be a slight hindrance, and you can try and use them against each other and stuff. But, yeah, I, I, I just love the fact that it's just pure chaos in box form. You know, it, it's not a quick game, it's not a simple game, but I, I love all you the love component it. qualities. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm a big fan of dungeon crawls, you know, doing the whole... Oh, going back, you know, I used to play D and D a lot, and yeah. find that I don't really have the time. This gives me that kind of dungeon crawl feel, but without it being a co-op and it, or an all v one, you know, mm. it's it's got that dungeon crawl, but you're killing your mates, <laughs> <laughs> which, it, which, is, just, which is occasionally yeah. what just what you need. Yeah, exactly. Um, you yeah. know, Ev- everyone mm-hmm. wants to kill their friends once. In a while, <clears> you know? Oh yeah, I think you have to. I think it's. I think you know. You kill your friends and they come back, then that's a friend for life. Yeah, exactly. ironically, spe- <laughs> ironically speaking, <laughs> or a zombie um, for life, one or the other. Is there okay? Oh, I know, and this is sounding like and and here's my next question, Mister May, which is question fifteen C. Um, when when is there a game that you have been that you have played that other people have thought this is rubbish? 
or they ha- it hasn't been received favourably, but you've actually went, well, this is, I really, really like this. This is really, really click with me. Um, I'm trying to think of any kind of major examples. I mean, there's been the odd one that I thought, oh, this is quite a nice game. Um, but nothing that I think I've been like, wow, this is a fantastic game. Mm. And then everyone else has hated. It tends to be more the other way around that there are games that people are like, this is the best game ever. And I play it and I'm like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> go on, um, um, go on, go on, go on and share. Cause <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> what I mean, game, like, what game, yeah. Scythe, but I, All right, I, okay. I enjoyed Scythe. I liked Scythe, right. but I just felt it, it. The way people were talking about it, it was like this is the best game ever. It's like no, it's not the best game ever. It's a good game. <laughs> it's wrong, not Arcadia it's not Quest. The best game ever. <laughs> yeah, it's not Arcadia go. Quest exactly. <laughs> Where's my little? Where's my little kind of like chibi miniatures? What's that all about? You know what I mean? This is rubbish. I, I quite like the miniatures inside, actually. I Although quite I did like see. It. I saw something online where apparently they've upgraded the miniatures now, so all the people who had the Kickstarter are kicking up a fuss because they don't have the best miniatures. Oh well, I think that's just you know a game is going to evolve, and there's going to be yeah. I, I mean, mean, that's my thought on it. Any other product, you expect over time for there to yeah. be reprints, and when they have yeah. the reprint, they'll improve and fix and improve. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. just the way of products. Second um, edition, third edition, Fury of Dracula kind of springs to mind. I mean, let's look at Space Hulk. The original Space Hulk, the 2014 version of Space Hulk, the 2016 I've version. I've only played the original. You know, and... And, and, and that was 20-odd oh. years ago. <laughs> I've got the I've got the 2014 and it's beautiful to look at, but it's nowhere near in terms of resemblance. It doesn't look anything, obviously, like the like the original. But I can see where I think. Do you know what it is with something like Kickstarter? I think when people back a Kickstarter, they say, "Right, I this is I I helped you bring this to the bring this to the." Bring this to the table in the first place. Yeah, I, I, I do think, think it is you know, a Kickstarter thing. I, yeah. I don't think anything else. If someone brought, if someone j- just gone and bought, you know, the first edition of Scythe type thing, yeah, they they wouldn't be kicking up a fuss. It is purely well, I the I help this thing be. Why do I not have the best version? Well, they'd be stamping out the ashes on Dungeons and Dragons and flipping Games Workshop if that was the case. <laughs> if people didn't like editions, you know, oh, I, I, there'd be such an uproar if uh, Games Workshop went on to Kickstarter. Imagine like, that. why are you doing that? You have that too much be... money to do that. They should do that for an April Fool. I think that would be so funny. Just you know, we're going to be kickstarting. Um, we're going to be kickstarting kind of. Um, the original Space Crusade again with upgraded miniatures, just to <laughs> see what people would do. That you'd be able to see the flames the, from the space. Thing is, th- there would be <laughs> there'd be the people who would be like, "Why are you doing this? You don't need it." And then there'd yeah. be the people who are just like, "Take my money!" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they'd, be do- they'd be doing a future <laughs> Yes, yes. Take exactly. my money, you fool! And they'd be thrown out of it. Just be like, get it, kind of like. Three four copies just for the sake of having three four copies, kind of, kind of just in case. Um, I yeah, we did an episode. Me and Colin did an episode recently, and we talked about Scythe and we talked about Viticulture. And I, I've still not played Viticulture. Oh, it's one that people keep telling me I should play, and I've just not, I've not had the opportunity. You know, it's just when it's you, not been around when I've had the time. When's your birthday, Michael? Uh, August. <laughs> right. Okay. That's what you need to ask for your birthday. If anyone out there is thinking about getting Michael a birthday present, <laughs> do him a favour and get him a lovely, beautiful copy of Viticulture, particularly maybe the special extended edition. It is so... I don't know. I played... When we talked on the episode, we did one, We talked about Scythe and we talked about Viticulture and... I walked away from Viticulture like I'd just been on holiday and I walked away from Scythe kind of feeling like I'd been on one of those adventure holidays where I was cold and I was wet but I feel that <laughs> felt I built character <laughs> kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, Scythe is a can... game that gets better the more you play it. Yes. Um, because the more you learn it, the more you're used to it, the more you're able to Absolutely. do in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, Viticulture is just one of these ones that people keep like saying you should play this. And just haven't got round to it, but it, it's definitely on the list to play at some point. Yeah, and they've got the expansion. They've already got the expansion out, and now they're bringing out like the aerial expansion as well. So 
we'll just have to see. Of course, there is um, on the back of that you've got Stone Myers kind of charter stone coming out. Yeah, I'm not too sure what to make of that. I mean, nowadays I struggle to get people together to play like campaign games. As I say, yeah. it's been a month trying to get people together to play Arcadia Quest Inferno. So yeah. t- the the game looks fantastic, the artwork and everything. It looks like it's going to be a fun game, but I don't know the the whole legacy aspect and the campaign aspect just makes me go, yeah, I don't know that I'll get the people to play it. No, I mean I'm the same. I mean me, I mean a couple of years ago, me myself, Colin, I think Stu, and even Mister Leo started off in a de- descent campaign, and we were rocking and rolling kind of every Tuesday night, and then Tuesday night turned to once every couple of weeks, and then that turned into even further apart. And we eventually went, well, I guess we have to kind of stop, and that's my worry about legacy games in general is everybody talks about how pandemic legacy is the game that you have to experience yeah, that that's another one that basically and, it's just because of the legacy element yeah, that i've not got it yet yeah and i'm just sitting there well if i could play it myself and experience it then it would be fantastic i would absolutely do that um everything i've seen says play it with four players yeah and As then well. get, it, yeah like it's not even uh basically it's a uh, play it with two players it's all right but you need to play it with four players yeah to get the most out of it yeah and it's like that meme i keep saying seeing for dungeons and dragons where you've got the lord of the rings one and he goes you have my sword and then he says you have my bow and then you said you got the dwarf going you have my axe and then you got the fourth person saying i can't do this thursday <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah and that's, that, that that's... is exactly the problem and i i it's i think it's normal you know when yeah. you get to like well, my age anyway. Um, it's people have lives; they have other commitments, and it's yeah. hard to find time to game with the same people all the time. I'm lucky in that I game with lots of different groups that uh, I'm gaming all the time. Yeah, but it, it's not the same as having one core group that you're able to play through campaigns with and things like that. Well, I still think you know. I think the lesson to be learned from this is get viticulture. <laughs> I think put everything put everything to one side and uh, you know that that's kind of that's kind of it um i mean you i've i've seen you do kind of like uh a few kickstarter videos now i mean i saw your video for um awesome which does yeah, look I mean, does that, look that's awesome. kind of a b- big part of the channel now because uh, as i say i'm doing this full time so i need to try and get money in yeah. and kickstarter is and doing videos for other people's Kickstarter is a big way that yeah. I'm doing that. It's paid videos. I'm very forward and upfront about the fact that I am paid to do those. Yeah. Um, originally, when I started out, I was doing Kickstarter videos, but I wasn't being paid. But as time went on, I, I just had to start charging for those to mm-hmm. to make ends meet, really. Yeah. Um, but I, I really quite enjoy doing it because you you. It's odd because you'll end up playing games that you would never have tried otherwise. Yeah. And that's one of the things. Like, awesome. I never would have tried that otherwise. But I really enjoyed that. It was just great, fun, you know. It's just weird that it was this kind of, like, little Euro game almost, but with roll and move. Oh, it's just... Roll and move that wasn't a problem, didn't cause... Didn't make the game feel overly random and just had this really nice little dexterity element when i'm someone who typically doesn't like dexterity games because i'm clumsy as anything <laughs> so it's like oh, oh, there goes I've, the board oh, there we go i've lost again <laughs> well I'm that's a the dexterity game well is there any point because i've already lost <laughs> <laughs> oh i've accidentally tied my shoes together oh hell yeah clump no but i mean i think i mean we had sarah on the show and i think she was kind of like she was determined to get awesome made no matter what was happening and she was kind of like sinking yeah, she sunk she a did, chunk did of money such a great job on it though yes she did do such a great job with yeah. just the components like for the prototypes the amount of time she spent building up interest in the game going to conventions yeah she went to so many conventions all over the country you know pushing awesome and then that paid off you know it, it funded and I think it's going. It looks to be going pretty well. I think. I think um, next month. 
I think yeah, it's, it's like, I think well, that's just me. I think it's going to be um, it's yeah, going to be like out there to the backers. Weeks, I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's looking it's yeah, looking it's... really good. Do you have to be conscious if you're doing the difference between like say a paid? I take it when you're doing the paid kind of Kickstarter vids, it is just this is how you play. Are you? Do you no, have to? No, it's be, not. Yeah? I, I mean, I will give an opinion on a game in All a right, paid okay. video, but with the paid videos, I won't. I, I won't say something I don't believe with the paid videos. There, yeah, there's okay. that, because there's no point me doing videos if I'm going to lie in them. Because uh-huh. as a reviewer, as someone doing a channel, people have to be able to believe what I'm saying. If they can't believe yeah. what I'm saying, there's no point in them watching. Yeah. However, you know, it might be I'm doing a paid preview of a game that isn't my type of game that I didn't particularly enjoy. And yeah. in that case, I won't go, I hate this game. I will go, this is how you play the game, this is what it's like, Yeah. it has these aspects that you may like, it has this aspects that you may like. I'm a very firm believer in that there's no such thing as a negative review. You can have good reviews and you can have bad reviews, but you can't have positive and negative. Because no. a review should just tell you what you need to know to decide whether you want to play a game, get a game, whatever. Yeah. And if you are saying you do not like a game, as long as you say why you do not like the game and what else is good, what is good about the game, what is bad about the game, whether or not you like it or not, it kind of doesn't matter. All that matters is that people can look at what you've said and go, I agree with that, I disagree with that, and know, well, that's a reason I should play it or not play it. This is why I like the medium of board games over video game reviews, because... And this is a side thing, but it will link back in, so keep on listening. But generally, video game reviews have come round to one thing, and one thing only, which is the score. The That's why I don't score. I don't wh- do ranking. And and I've seen the... Um, and so far, the people that I watch when they're talking about board games don't give a score at the end. And I think that's a very, very important thing. <laughs> to keep yeah. away from because all I see when I see adverts on television for say um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to think the latest Mario Kart game Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and it has been getting kind of it's been getting universal praise um, across the board and it's been getting kind of 10 outs of 10s and 99 out of 100s and stuff like that but when you see a kind of a, a graphic from Nintendo all you see is a wall full of scores, but you might that jump tell on. You anything, no, you does might. It? Yeah, exactly. You yeah. might jump on to Mario Kart and go, "Oh, I didn't realize it was like this. This maybe isn't the game for me." And if I had to give it a score, I would maybe give it like a seven out of ten instead. And what I like about still still seems to be happening in the board game kind of space. Um, and I haven't seen it yet, and I'm maybe maybe I'm watching the wrong guys, but I haven't seen I've seen people give it kind of like maybe a thumbs up or a thumbs down, or they'll recommend it or not recommend it. But you still have to watch the content of the video in order to understand whether or not people actually like the game and the strengths and the weaknesses of the game. And I think that's yeah. a very good thing, which is why I mean, you get. I, yeah. I think there are some channels moving towards the scoring. I know the Dice Tower. Um, mm. They they do the scoring, or at least they do their um, week in review one. And yeah. they score them on there. Um, but I I've actually had people asking me to do that, asking why I don't do that and stuff. Um, so there is some people all they want is just a number to go. Is it good or is it bad? With a number, mm. there, there are people who want that, but it's not yeah. What but I then that takes you yeah, know I mean that it, takes I, away I from the work. Think it's useful. And I think people put too much stock into numbers. The number of people I've heard talking about, oh, the game's got blah on Board Game Geek or this on Board Game Geek, and it's like, well, what does that matter? What matters is whether you enjoy the game and what it is that will make you enjoy the game or not enjoy the game. Uh, who is it I heard? Was it some, I heard somebody talking about Board Game Geek and um, that they had gone... It was... Was it Bez... And Bez was she was talking about Board Game Geek and how somebody was talking about one of the games. I think um, 
I'm just trying to think. But she, is, what is she this was the people who go putting one on everything. Yes, they put a one in and everything because yeah. it's a game that they're not there, interested like in playing. One person, no, there's like one person specifically where they all they do is put ones, and it's like deemed a rite of passage as a publisher to have your game ranked a one by this person. <laughs> I, they, they must have no life or something. They just spend oh, all their time going know. one, no. one, one. And even if they've not played the game, one, one, That's one. That's just ridiculous. And as you say, there are a lot of people who will just maybe watch a Dice Tower video. Oh, Tom Vassell said it's great. I'll give it a 10. Tom Vassell yeah. said it's rubbish. I'll give it a 1. And yeah. they've never actually played the game themselves. So, yeah, it's, yeah I, I, that's a big problem with those ranking systems, that they are not very good, frankly. Well, I would and give... I mean, the, I would play Arcadia and stuff yeah. get hugely shot up and inflated in a way that makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say. I mean, I might play Arcadia Quest and say it's a 6. And you might be saying, well, it's an 11, actually, I think you'll find. (laughs) And it's, you know... And I'll say, well, actually, you know, Scythe was actually, you know, Scythe's a 9. And you say, well, actually, in my experience, Scythe was a 7. And that's just the difference with two numbers. But you'd have to have a... Because the number doesn't tell you anything. Our experiences could have been different based on the people that we played with, etc. And the only way you'd find that out is by going into more detail to have a more detailed discussion about why it's those numbers. And there might be crossover there and it's just, well, I dislike the thing that you liked. I mean, as you go on, have you found the kind of the the need for exposure and the number of people approaching you to do reviews, has that increased as far as Kickstarter goes? Um, I think it has potentially. I think... It kind of goes in waves. So, like, it was back in February, I think. Yeah, it was back in February. Like, there was loads of people going, got my Kickstarter coming, got my stick Kickstarter coming. Yeah. Type thing. And it was like, well, I can only do, you know, like one a week maximum. So I can't do yours because um, I've already committed to things. And then there are other times, like, I haven't um, taken on any new paid videos for Kickstarters in over a month now. Yeah. Um, so it, it's definitely a case of there are quiet times and busy times. When I started the channel, I think I was doing more chasing of other people saying, would you like a review, etc. Yes. But no. once I got to the point of moving to paid videos, which was around August last year, yeah. um, was when I started doing the paid videos, it's been much more a case of other people coming to me. Um, I'm in a few groups as well on social media so that are established for reviewers to meet publishers and stuff so between those groups and people just knowing about the channel and contacting me anyway um i I haven't really gone looking for games and gone you know do you want a review type thing for probably easily since september last year no i mean i think i mean that's kind of happening to us i mean i know that we're not we certainly don't have the the audience size that you do, but we even ourselves are getting, you know, contacted by people to say, "Listen, I need to get this name out here, and if it means it's going in front of you know, fifty people, a hundred people, five thousand people, you know, can I have a chat with you so we can kind of cover it off?" So we have seen that kind of like ourselves. Yeah. I think it's become. I mean, it, it's it's very good for. For the publishers what you're doing because it gives them an opportunity to get people aware of the game talk about the game oh, yeah. without them having to produce more prototypes you know they can just have a discussion with you yeah i mean um, we never we never sort of asked for them you doesn't know. really work for video no <laughs> because no, you can't the whole being in different locations <laughs> just doesn't really work, doesn't work otherwise all. all you've got is just video of people just sat there with headsets on and i think those videos are absolutely terrible who would watch those i don't know uh, but, yeah. no idea. it's either that or if they you know i guess the other thing is, is that we never kind of take on kind of review copies i mean in anything that we have done we've it's always been through either you know collins collins got it um but when we talk to the other when we talk to like um Sarah Kennington and One Free Elephant when we had Kevin Young on when anyone that's had a game they want to talk about we don't have a physical copy of the game 
in front of us. We weren't sent kind of anything because we just haven't. And because I would run out of room probably very, very quickly yeah. and I would end I mean, up in the same out, situation. I, I, I had to have a big clear out um, in January. I got yeah. rid of like 50 games because I just had all of these like prototypes and review copies of mm. games and frankly I, I I don't really understand how people have these like game libraries of thousands of games because you you cannot play that many. <laughs> I've said that before. It's like I've seen, you know, it's like I have seen and I think I said this on when I spoke to maybe Frank West um Saying to him, like, I've seen these big walls of games and it's like, I know how long it takes to play to play when some of these games. And unless you're, like, 75 years old and you've been playing games non-stop for, like, 48 hours a day, there's no way you've played all these games. Yeah. You've just got... I mean, you hear about the, the shelves of shame, don't you? The oh, piles yeah. of shame. Yeah. And you, some people have hundreds of games that they bought but never played. I uh, know. I know. I think I've got a couple now, but I'm. I mean that. You know, funnily enough, that was why me and Colin kind of got. We're not wizards going because we're like, well, at least if we have to, um, you know, at least if we have to force ourselves to play a game, because otherwise, if we don't talk about it, then we're gonna let the audience down. But I mean, there was still gives you a little extra motivation. Oh well, there was there was still Forge War Gate, which we, (laughs) we we. we had an entire episode called, you know, Ashes of the Forge War that we never played. And we went on, we just went, sorry guys, we know it's been like three weeks, but we still haven't played Forge War. <laughs> I mean, we went on later on and played it, but I think, yeah, I mean, it is kind of, I guess the difference between having like a computer game kind of, kind of, uh, kind of pile of shame as they call it is, computer games generally come in little boxes, <laughs> little DVD sized boxes well, that I you can stick also, on a shelf, you there's know? There's also an element of computer games have less of a replay value to them a lot of the time yeah so whereas you'll collect board games and have this big pile of board games that you'll play computer games is much more transitory people will play it and then get rid of it yeah Um, i mean obviously board games is going that way with the whole you know legacy thing but i think yeah there's definitely as you say then as well you can kind of just hide it away in a drawer rather than mm. it being a wall for it. <laughs> exactly. Rather than you having to like kind of go into the cupboard and say, right, and just try to get some pasta for the dinner and then having to move a copy of kind of like code names <laughs> to the side in order to get, you know, to get access to kind of like the cooking sauce type of thing. I mean, you funded this year, as we said, going back full circle, you funded this year on Kickstarter. Um have you and you're obviously you're funding through the paid videos have you is the youtube kind of revenue thing is that is that something that's worth it because what i hear from a lot of youtubers is that youtube have kind of i been i am only able about. to do this because of savings that we have and right. because of the fact that my wife is willing to support me right okay i i am I think I can only I could probably count on my hand on a single hand the number of people who do board game media full time and actually yeah. earn a full time wage. Yeah. <clears throat> it it is not something that you can go into and make money really. Yeah, and I think yeah. you are one of the big guys and realistically at this point they are big because of how long they've been going. Yeah, I know. No one new I, coming in is going to be able to compete with them. No, I mean, I've, I mean, let's you know, the elephant in the room is the good old shut up and sit down. But they are not doing it through ad revenue. They are doing it because they've got their own little club that people can almost yeah. pay into. Like, I a, mean, theirs like is in, es- in essence, it's um, it is crowd funded still. Yes, but yeah. Um, it's it's just they've gone a very different route about it. Um, yeah, yeah, I say a different route about it. They were one of the first, really, to monetize. Yeah. So, it's just the way that they've done it. They've got people to basically paid sponsorship um, by individuals for their. I think they call it the Gold Club or something like. Yeah. That. No. 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 Yeah. They could. They got the um, Gold Club and people. But, I mean, pay as well as that, amount, they, yeah. they get paid quite a lot for appearances they do they get paid for um i mean quinn especially does a lot of kind of feedback on games 
Um, yeah, no, they do. Con- I mean, they do consultancy. They, I mean, they, they, yeah, he, he was involved in. Stuff. Um... They, they get paid a lot for that. They're going to conventions and everything. They get paid for. So yeah, I mean, they they make money through lots of different streams, but they're streams that they can only make the money through because they are so huge. Yeah, and they work their asses off as well. I mean, these aren't guys that are sitting there on a thirty thousand you know thirty thousand dollar a month kind of Patreon or something, just rolling it in after you know turning out one or two videos a month. You know, they are, seem to be constantly kind of working. You know, yeah, I mean, no, obviously they've they've got the two streams going as well because they have got the computer game side of it as yeah. well. Yeah, no, no, yeah, um, yeah, they've got that. So, so yeah, it's... I mean, it helps that there are so many of them doing it, but mm. I, I think they're definitely a unique case. I would say I, if you look at the people who are making money, they are the ones doing it in the in a different way to the other people. Yeah, you look at people like the Dice Tower, Watch It Played, etc., you can see where their money is coming from, really. You know, the Dice Tower, huge, huge Kickstarters of, I think, two quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, something um, like that. Their running costs are a fraction of that. So, yeah. that you know, <laughs> yes, they're paying a lot to go to conventions, stuff like that, but they are making good money. Yeah, that There is absolutely. no doubt about that. Um, and then there's a uh, good old Rodney Smith. Yeah, Rodney Smith. Um, I mean, he he does really well as well. I mean, his Kickstarter. I think. Um, well, it's not Kickstarter. He uses Indiegogo, but I think he got like fifty thousand um, dollars this year. And he also he gets paid for all his videos, so that very much balances it. Yeah. No. No. I mean, that's. I mean, and obviously he will get sent the review copies as well a lot of the time. Well, no, he's, so... pa- he's paid to make the videos. Yeah. So it's, it's all his it's his all how to play. So he's paid to do those by the yeah. publishers. So yeah. um, I I don't know. I think a lot of people aren't really aware of that fact. But yeah, he, he he the videos that he does, not necessarily all of them, but a lot of them, he is paid to do them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I I think that it's fine personally. Uh, there are people who feel oh you know it, conflict of interest and all of this. But yeah, he is but... performing a service. He is producing something for them. You know, if someone was printing their rule book for them, hmm. you wouldn't be like, oh, well, they've paid someone for the rule book. And you know what? See, the other side of it as well is he doesn't... He just says, this is how you play the game. He never can... He really does a good yeah, job I mean, of he's avoiding setting, giving he's an opinion He's set himself well. up. He, he will not give an opinion. In, you know, it's no. not even just he won't do it on his videos. He won't yeah. do it on social media he won't no. do it in a public any public forum basically no. he will not give an opinion and even cool. if you like go on the side and email him or whatever he would not give you an opinion yeah yeah but anyway enough about those guys what what where do you where are you wanting to go with the channel what would you like to because the reason well the reason i like your channel is quite simple because it's friendly. It's there. You don't go into big, huge rambles about stuff. It's easy to understand. It's straightforward. You get a really good sense of what your thoughts are on the videos as well. Yeah, although We're, sometimes I do ramble a bit. But that's not wrong. With, listen, you're talking <laughs> I, to I, master I, rambler here. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> if yeah, talking... I, I found one thing that really helps me is um, most of my videos I do script them. So yeah. that helps keep the rambling down because when you're looking at it on a piece of paper, you you can kind of go, okay, well that's repetition or that's not needed, you know. Yeah. You just kind of cut it down and down and down and get it much more precise. Um, but the problem with doing that is it does take a lot more time and effort. I mean, yeah. as for where I'm wanting to go with the channel, yeah, um, just kind of more of the same, really. I mean, I've been. I, I started around the new year trying to do collaborative efforts to get other people kind of more of a community built up, getting other people contributing videos and helping to share other channels and share our audiences and stuff, um, which has been good fun and a lot of work. But that's something that, because of other people's commitments, much like we were saying really with the whole trying to get yeah. people together to game, it's yeah. difficult for people to find the time to do the videos. So that's something that's going to be taking maybe less of a focus really i'd been trying to do roughly one a week um but that's going to be taking less of a focus one thing i want to kind of just kind of go forward with is just kind of trying to get a better balance with the kickstarter stuff and new releases 
but obviously with the new releases because I'm not big enough to be sent them by the publishers uh, there's cost involved with that so it's a, it's all a balancing act and as long as I'm growing I don't mind how quickly it is just yeah. slow growth carrying on yeah the, the simple fact is I, I love doing this I mean I've had jobs you know I've had the typical office jobs you know I've worked in factories I've worked in warehouses I've done all sorts of jobs and people always talk about the Monday feeling that oh I don't want to go into work I don't get that I no longer have that and to <laughs> me that is just what that you want. is what you want yeah. yeah the fact that I'm not really making any money for the time being is fine you know as long as I can keep growing and maybe get to a point of making an actual wage that'd be good at the moment the way things are in my life we can afford to do that so for the time being it'll be carrying on I want to just keep putting out content keep trying to do best improve the channel I mean with the kickstarter funding I was able to get a second battery which is really key I mean I've really found it useful that like the day I got the battery it was like yeah. my camera died I was halfway through recording play through <laughs> my camera died and it was like ah oh, the battery's arrived <laughs> and so it was oh, like I can carry awesome. on working you know small things like that and that that's part of why I was doing the Kickstarter is to help cover those costs because the initial outlay of the channel for the first year was £3,000 roughly yeah, and I do have exact figures, and anyone who wants them, I'm fully open with the channel. I, <laughs> as part of the Kickstarter, I shared this is the budget for the coming year. This is why I'm asking for the money. Yeah. Um. So I I don't believe in hiding any of this information. I want to be completely open and honest, and you know, help other people. Where anyone starting have an idea of costs associated, etc. Um. So as I say, the first year was three thousand pounds with equipment and everything but that involved getting a computer to do editing a camera to do the recording because when i started out i was just using my mobile phone and that was it that was my it's editing all things, recording it? it was everything yeah but you don't get the quality no that, that's the thing and that's one thing i'm striving to improve is to i one thing i want to do with the channel is i do want to always be improving and equipment is a big way of doing that I mean one way of improving is myself improving and thankfully that's something that kind of happens naturally um, I don't know if it's still happening but I think it probably is it, that you, uh... you just get more natural with things more used to being in front of the camera and f so it just produces better content in that way but there are definitely people out there who I envy how effortless they make it seem how intelligent how funny they are with the things that they do in a way that i don't feel i necessarily could be um i would love to be able to do those things but i think some of it has to come down to natural ability hmm. but i'm i'm pleased with what i'm doing with the channel i focus on information that that's kind of where i gear the channel that's i'm not the comedic aspect i'm not the entertaining aspect it's about informing and i try and do that in as concise and friendly a manner as possible and it's something that i've grown and improved on over the course of the past 16 months doing this no it's very it's very very good and for people who i guess the thing is for people who who want to find out who've listened tonight and said this guy's cool let's go and check out his channel What's the easiest way to find you? Where do you exist on the interwebs nets, Mr. It Ray? is best to find me if you actually want to see the videos on YouTube. Yeah. Just okay. search for To Can Play That Game. It should be one of the top results, if not the top result now. Um, awesome. For a while it was something about Toucans, but uh, hopefully now, <laughs> now it is me. It. I've, I've got en enough views. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you know, the, the usual forums, Facebook, Twitter... Um, again, you know, just search and you, you'll find me if you search for Two Can Play That Game. Well, we are, you know, obviously as normal, we will collect some links off you so we can put them in the show notes so we have notes to show. Ah, oh, very basically, good, very good. yes. So we can we'll throw them out there, and people can. And remember, when you find the links, and the links will be in the show notes, you jolly better go on to Michael's <laughs> channel and you, chuck you him see, a subscribe. I, I, I always put links in like all the descriptions and stuff. I don't believe people use them. 
Yeah, but you know, you never know. There's always going to be some person. If it's there, and if it's not, the then they don't. But at least it gives, you know. But then again, whenever I listen to a podcast, if it's a guest that I really like and there's a Twitter link, then normally what I'll do is I'll click on that link and I'll chuck them a quick follow if I like um, if I like hearing what they've what they've been saying. Um, if you want to keep up with what we're doing then just go to Google and search We're Not Wizards. We're on Twitter, We're Not Wizards. We've got our website, which is we're not wizards.com or .co.uk. We've got uh, Facebook, which is We're Not Wizards. We're on YouTube, but we have not got anywhere near the number of subscriptions that Michael has got. So we are some kind of strange code. But if you search for We're Not Wizards tabletop podcast, you will find us on there. We're on Instagram at We're Not Wizards. You can email us magic at we're not wizards.com or .co.uk. That will find us either way. Um I've thoroughly enjoyed chatting to you, Michael. You're a fascinating and very, very interesting person to chat I think with. That's, that's the first time I've ever been told that. I just no, I really, really enjoyed <laughs> I really, really enjoyed this. This has been a really um I've enjoyed this a lot. Um there are only I guess two more things to do. Now the first thing is to remember that we are many things but we're not wizards. Are we wizards Michael? No we are not wizards. We are definitely not wizards. (laughs) And the second thing is to say bye bye. So again it's a big thank you for Michael for coming on this evening and giving us a lot of his valuable time because I know how long it takes to process a video and how much time it takes, so I appreciate him giving us the time for this evening. But it's a big, huge goodbye from Michael. Goodbye, and thanks for having me on, Richard. It's really been great talking to you. <laughs> it's been brilliant. I've really had fun. And it's a goodbye from me. Remember, stay safe, roll sixes... Get yourself on YouTube and find out how many games that two people can play and check out two can play that game. And uh, until the next time, goodbye. <laughs>